What's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Gabe. And today we're going to talk about what are the things maybe you're not thinking about when you're looking for property. I have another video that's going to be coming up. And it's going to be like the top three or five things that you need to do before you buy your uh, homestead property. But in this video, we're just going to tackle one that probably isn't going to make the other list, but is super duper relevant. All right, so I'm hanging out with my biggest homestead homie, uh, Gabe. He came from Ohio. His mom asked him what he wanted to do for spring break. And what would you say? Doug and Stacy. He wanted to come and see Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. So they drove all the way here in their RV. They've been posting up for a couple days, and the whole time they've been here, it has been pouring. I think in the last three weeks, we've had rain on and off every day, every other day, and not just like a shower or something. We've been getting like two to six inches of rain every single time it's rained. This homestead is what? It, what is it? It's a hot mess. <laughs> we have puddles and rain and everything going on. Uh, but the nice thing is, is we were able to play some board games together. Mm -hmm. Was that fun? Mm -hmm. What'd you like about it? Um, I got to play board games with people. <laughs> Cause not only am I good at jacks, but I'm good at board games. <laughs> and his brother came with him too and his mom. Um, so they're just a real nice family out doing the homesteading thing. And they actually have a little spot in Ohio. What do you have on your uh, homestead? We have chickens, goats, horses, dogs, and cats. Sounds like a homestead to me. And do you guys grow a little food? Yeah. You have a little garden? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's actually pretty good, big, but we have it behind the chicken coop. So we, if there's any weeds growing in the in there, we can just throw them to the chickens. There you go. And that's a smart thing for aging in place, right? So the older you get, the less you have to move around transport planting your weeds everywhere. Yeah, it's good stuff. So we're, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go on and we're going to talk about this video uh, because we're going to give you this tip on something that you need to think about when you get your property. So what we have here is um, a natural runoff creek. So if you can see, uh, you can probably tell the drop that we have here. Up here is pretty high. It's probably about a 10 foot drop from the top up there uh, to all the way down here. And that's why we have this natural runoff creek uh, that takes the water from the land on both sides too. This side's a little high, and then this side's a little high by the cabin, and then everything comes down into this crevice, and then this is our runoff creek, so it goes this way. So we don't have water in the creek full time, but when we do have good rains, um, it does fill up pretty good. One of the main points of this video is to check out the lay of the land, right? If you have a nice hill on your property, you don't want to put your house right smack down at the bottom of that hill because when it does rain four, five, six inches at a time, several times during the season or you know that month or that week, you're really going to have a lot of water build up around your house and it's going to cause you a lot of problems. And, you're, and if you have a basement, it can flood. Exactly right. And then you'll be really upset because then that causes a lot of mold and mildew and you'll have to pump it out and clean it out. So when you're looking at your land, if it doesn't have a house on it already, make sure that you're not building at the bottom of a crevice or a, a runoff or anything like that. And now we're actually in the garden. And one of the things that you're going to have to know when you get to your homestead and you want to get out there and you want to do these things is the weather, right? So we, you guys saw a video that we just did, I'll link it right there, where we did some onions. We gave you guys some great tips on planting your onions so you can get the biggest onions. But now the whole projects are shut down because there's so much rain, we, the beds are, the raised beds are really gonna be a good saver because they'll drain pretty quick. Uh, the back to Eden garden is gonna be a little sloppy uh, because it really retains the moisture. Um, and we have more rain, as you can see by the skies, we haven't seen sun around here in a while. And that's another reason why our greenhouse is ineffective because we don't have a heat source and they're, they're not the photo rays of the sun are not penetrating into the greenhouse so we can even start our seeds now i know you watch some channels that might be in missouri and they're already starting seeds and everything's already growing but we're in northern missouri so our timeline is just a little bit different because of the weather we stay a little cooler longer and that's one of the reasons why stacy and i moved to northern missouri <laughs> pretty good thinking wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah so have you guys started any seeds at your house no. Yeah, because they're in Ohio, which is kind of similar to our weather too, right? 
Yeah, and we're really waiting because I have carrot seeds that we need to plant, and you kind of need to plant them in really early spring. Yeah. So we're kind of just waiting until there's sun so we can plant my. Yeah, because it's almost fishing. pretty early spring at your I house because you guys, uh, you guys actually drove through snow to get here. Yeah. Yeah, and you had to stop. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna show you one more thing. So one of the things you might want to consider is if you can swale up certain parts of your land, obviously that's good for permaculture and for growing. Swales are really good for directing water on your property. We have some swales here that as you can see lead right into the pond. So our pond is always getting naturally filled by the surface water. And right now it's just overflowing. There's so much uh, water that we've had. And on this side over here that you can probably see that's where it fills up and it's basically like a drain area where when it gets to a certain height so it never runs over the banks it'll actually just drain out there into that natural creek that you guys saw, saw a minute ago so if it's feasible for you guys if you could actually swale up an area and even dig out a pond a pond I did a video about it right there is a super great asset uh, to any homestead we have fish in there that we fish obviously our ducks are there they're enjoying it so Gabe actually has a YouTube channel called Gabe's Homestead Journey. Gabe's Homestead Journey. So Gabe wants to ask me a few questions. Uh, we're gonna wrap this video up here, but my main point of this video, guys, is you never know how much rain you're actually gonna get. So when you're looking at your property and you're kind of out there, maybe go, when it, before you buy it, go after a heavy duty rain, and so you can see how the water falls on the land and you know how everything's running off so then you can make smart decisions on building your house if the one isn't already there or even your outbuildings you wouldn't want to have that was one of the things i definitely took into consideration when i built the house behind you guys is the lay of the land i would have liked to have the barn more down here and facing south but because the way the land was i put it at the top because that way all the water drains down this way i didn't want to have it facing south downhill and then have all the water just rush right into the barn every time we had these kind of rains because we are known to get some pretty good rains here in the midwest so make sure you guys go over to gabe's channel i'll leave a link down below for you guys and check it out now he's gonna drive home today this is real time stuff this video you guys are watching this video and they're packing up to leave right now so his video might be up tonight but he says it'll be up tomorrow yeah you sure yeah because my thing takes so long to upload yeah so he's gonna get home and try to get it all edited and uploaded. and all that stuff and then he's gonna get it up so check his channel tomorrow maybe leave him some nice comments and thanks for coming by we really appreciate it we've had a great time and hopefully you guys got a little nugget out of this video i haven't been able to make my videos uh lately because it's been pouring down rain and then they were here so we were just hanging out and having a good time so as always check us out on instagram twitter facebook <laughs> good job that's awesome man he is a homestead homie to the bone I mean, he came out to lehman's too and if you saw the homesteading is a movement video right at the very end he actually was on the very end so he loves our channel and uh he's growing up and he wants to have a homestead and he's getting a lot of information and notes all right you guys don't forget to check out his channel leave him some encouraging words and uh, that's it we'll see you guys on the next video <laughs> hey homestead homies and today I'm gonna read you my poem. I wake up in the morning to start a new homesteading journey. I walk to the barn, have lots of fun, feeding my animals before the rising sun. I head off to school and learn math and reading, but all I can think about is my homesteading journey. I hop off the bus or to hug my goats and feed my horses a cookie. At night as I drift off to sleep, I dream to homestead just like Doug and Stacy. Hey guys, and I'm a homestead homie. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.